Hey, Life Designers, welcome to Intentional Tuesdays. This week, we're going to be talking about how to make better decisions in our lives. My guess is that most of us do pretty well when it comes to the big decisions in our lives, the decisions that we give our full attention and our full focus. But the reality is we are making hundreds and arguably thousands of decisions each and every day on what could best be described as autopilot. What about all of those decisions? Aren't some of those decisions consequential and therefore worthy of a bit more of our attention, a bit more of our intention? That is going to be the subject for this week's Intentional Tuesdays. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stick with us because we are going to jump right in. So this week's episode is part of a sub-series that I really enjoy that I call The Right Life. This week I am looking to an author, Neil Gaiman, and he has a technique that he recommends to aspiring dramatic fiction writers that we are going to be applying as this week's Intentional Tuesday lesson. So I call this technique forking roads, and what Neil Gaiman recommends is that if you keep putting your characters at a point where they have to make a decision one way or the other, and it, it's a crucial decision, and you just do that over and over again, it makes for great fiction. So he basically says, if you just write a series of forks in the road for your characters, in the end, you will have a compelling piece of dramatic fiction. It's a very cool technique. I really appreciated that lesson, but it got me thinking, how can we apply the same concept? And it, it uh, to me, it really does apply to our lives and everyday decision making. So how much of our daily decision making is happening beneath our conscious awareness? How much of it is happening through that autopilot function? If you don't notice that you are at a decision point, if you don't notice that you are at a fork in the road, then you're not really making a decision. You're simply allowing your default pattern, your habitual pattern, to take over and make the decision for you. And that's not really decision making. Now that strategy works well for many of the decisions that we make each day because it's very efficient. But when the stakes are a little bit higher, when the consequences are a little bit bigger, that type of default thinking does not work very well and it can often get us into trouble. For example, what is your reaction when your boss comes to you and makes an unreasonable request? Or what is your reaction when your spouse pushes your buttons the way only your spouse or your significant other knows how to do? Or what is your reaction when you are just under a lot of stress or strain or pressure? What is your typical pattern of behavior in those types of situations? These are all examples of decision making. We are making decisions about the situation at any given moment. The question is, are we making those decisions consciously or are we simply allowing our subconscious habitual patterns to make those decisions for us? What we aim to do here is to bring those situations into our awareness so that we can notice that we're at a fork in the road so that we actually can make an educated, intentional decision. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that we want to be fully attentive and intentional about every single decision that we make each and every day. That would be unrealistic. It would be completely exhausting. It's the situations where the consequences are higher that we really want to pay attention. So the first thing to do is to identify one or two areas in your life where you suspect that you could benefit from some better decision making. And maybe there are examples like the ones I gave you. Maybe there are some other examples where you just know this about yourself, that you could be a better decision maker under these certain circumstances. Identify those circumstances up front. And then I'm going to offer three steps for unpacking those decisions and really developing a strategy for how to handle those particular situations. Step number one is to identify how you will notice when the situation is arising. The problem with life is that it happens very, very quickly. Your boss just shows up at your desk and makes the unreasonable request. Your significant other 
through the course of just daily interaction, finds the, the situation and, and pushes your buttons and it all just happens so quickly you don't even realize it's occurring. Spend a little bit of time up front figuring out how will you notice when it's happening? How will you notice that you are approaching the crossroads? And it could just be as simple as when my boss sends me an email, I'm going to be ready for it to be an unreasonable request. When my significant other and I are having a conversation about money, uh, I have to be on the lookout for one of those uh, button pushing moments. Or I happen to know that I'm under a lot of stress right now, so I, I'm going to be on the lookout for decisions that I'm making under these conditions. Plan up front for what the triggers will be so that when the triggers occur, you can actually notice them occurring in the moment. Step two, and again, this is happening before you even get into the situation, is to identify what your typical pattern is. What is, what is my typical reaction when the situation arises? When my boss gives me the unreasonable request, I usually just nod my head and I say, yes, absolutely, I will do that. And then I take the request and I commit to it. And then as soon as my boss leaves, I, I just get myself really worked up and upset about how unreasonable that request is. That would be my normal pattern. Or when my significant other pushes my buttons, what I do is I withdraw from the conversation completely. I usually fire one angry comment and then I withdraw from the conversation entirely. That might be your normal pattern in that particular situation. Noticing what your normal pattern is in whatever the situation may be is incredibly helpful because now you have something to compare it to. You have an alternative. You can start to come up with alternatives. Instead of doing my normal thing, I'm going to experiment with doing something different. Now, step number three is to identify alternative decisions or alternative actions that you could make in that particular moment. So if you know your normal pattern is to do option A, what might option B look like? What might option C and D look like? That way, when the moment does arise and you notice that you are at a decision point, you will have already thought through what some other choices might look like because trying to figure all of that out in the moment is incredibly hard. And I, I, would, I would say it's actually impossible in the moment. So if you've thought through all of these things up front, when the situation arises, you will be well equipped to make a different decision. So now that you've devised the strategy, you've, you've done step one, two, and three, the last piece is simply putting this strategy into action. Be on the lookout for the trigger moments, be on the lookout for these situations uh, arising, and then identify the alternatives and, and actually play around with making a different decision than your normal pattern. I'm not suggesting that you have to make a different decision every single time. Sometimes you might decide that your default pattern is the right course of action, but at least you've chosen that. At least you've made a choice to do A, B, C, or D, as opposed to just letting your software make the decision automatically for you. Over time, if you play around with this and you, and you keep trying different things, you will you will decide and you will over time learn what works better for you, what works uh, maybe not, not so well, and you'll, you'll avoid those and you'll move in the direction of better decision making. This type of learning can only happen when you are being intentional, when you are actually watching yourself make the decisions. And none of that is possible if you don't first notice that you are at a decision point. You are at a fork in the road. So raise your awareness, notice the forks in the road, at least in the situations that you think are probably the high stakes situations, and then learn how to make better decisions through a series of experiments, trial and error, and, uh, and that will, uh, over time, will result in uh, higher quality decision making. So that's it for this week's Intentional Tuesdays. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you got a lot out of this. As always, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your attention. I look forward to our paths crossing again in the not too distant future. And until that day comes, I wish you all the best and prosperous journey. Take care.